Hello, Jill. Hi, Sue. Thanks for coming to Green Biz Verge today. It's been quite a day, and thank you for taking a few minutes out to talk with us at Innovating Smart. My pleasure. So, Gil, tell us uh, your full name and uh, the name of your company, and, and tell us what is the uh, sustainability-driven innovative things that you're doing there. Sure. Uh, I'm Gil Friend. I'm CEO of Natural Logic Incorporated. We're a strategy consulting firm. Uh, we advise companies, mostly major brands, on taking sustainability seriously and taking it deep. Now what that means is seeing sustainability as a, as, a, as a fundamental source of business value. So the companies we work with are looking to embed sustainability in the business, not as a nice to have, not as an add-on, not as a reporting requirement or regulatory requirement, uh, but as something that provides a new way of looking at the business to drive innovation, drive value, drive customer satisfaction, and ultimately drive brand and profit, all while uh, reducing footprint and contributing to quality of life. Excellent. In the world. Now, how do they measure that value, and how do they um, uh, realize it in a in a market recognized way? Uh, simplest way to recognize value is to look at revenue and profit, mm -hmm. uh, and share value, mm -hmm. uh, and brand value. Uh, so all of those are part of the equation. Uh, increasingly, companies are finding that a very significant part of brand value and share value is intangible; is not in the specifics of, uh, of uh, physical assets or even revenue, but reputational. Absolutely. A um, um, lot of measures are, haven't found their ways to the balance sheet yet, uh, but uh, companies that are smart and understand the value equation are, mm -hmm. are, are, are courageously moving ahead of the mechanics uh, based on their sense of, what, uh, of, of where the value lives. So we will, lately what we've been doing is helping companies look at their entire value chain, not just through their own organization, but through mm -hmm. their supply chain upstream and downstream. Um, and um, you know, typically people look at a value chain as something that adds value at each stage of the process. Right. Uh, the question that we're asking is where is their value leakage? Uh -huh. uh, where is their lost opportunity? And that could be things as, as direct and tangible as excess resource spend mm -hmm. uh, or resources that make their way to the landfill instead of into mm -hmm. the product. Uh, or lost sales opportunities or sales opportunities that are one shot rather than ten year. Yes. Um, uh, so we're finding that this is an enormously, and, 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 and doing that as a systemic exercise, looking not just piece by piece, but at the interconnections among all the elements in the value chain. Um, and frankly, we've been saying to our clients for years that, that sustainability holds the biggest business opportunity of the 21st century. Uh, what we're finding is that we were understating the value. Yes, um, say more about that. Uh, the value is massive. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I, 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 I actually can't talk about specific numbers or specific clients because there's such a strong competitive play at work here. Uh, but I'll say that both we and our clients were staggered by the kinds of value opportunities that this work has been opening up. That's amazing. So um, it's, it's clear that this is very compelling work. And uh, could you say a little bit about how it's important to you personally? How did, how did you get into this kind of work? and and, and what does it mean to you? Uh, well, fresh out of college, within a year out of graduating college, uh, a long time back in the last century, I spent mm -hmm. a month uh, with Buckminster Fuller's organization mm -hmm. uh, in a design charrette for the planet called the World Game. The World Game. Yeah. Uh, this was an exercise of looking uh, at uh, planetary, at, at the state of affairs and the needs uh, on a planetary scale around uh, energy, resources, food, housing, healthcare, communications, transportation, mm -hmm. education, recreation, and a number of other areas. And the challenge to us was to look at the present state of humanity, the preferred state of what would be a world that worked for everyone, mm -hmm. and chart a path from here to there. Um, uh, way more fun and educational than four years of college. <laughs> Uh, and the takeaway was that it was very clear from doing a both a whole system scan and a deep dive into the data, mm -hmm. it was very clear that there was no necessary <coughs> barrier mm -hmm. to a world that works for 100% of humanity, in Bucky's words, in the shortest possible time, through spontaneous cooperation, without ecological offense, or the disadvantage of anyone. Say so something I, so, more I, about si so I signed on. And that's been the work that I've been doing for the past 40 years. Yes, you have. Yeah. Tell me more about it being very clear. What was, uh, can you characterize that clarity? Well, just one example. I, I, did, I focused on food and agriculture in that exercise. And um, you know, just, we, just, we, we did the research and we did the calculations. And it was clear that despite uh, the, the um, 
uh, widespread existence of hunger and even starvation in the world. It was not because there wasn't enough food on the planet. We were growing enough food to feed everybody. Right. Um, in fact, we were even growing enough food to feed everybody in countries where there was rampant hunger. So the problem wasn't production, it was distribution, uh, economic viability, people's ability to buy food, people's ability to access food. It's a different kind of problem. Was it also about what the food was, what kind of food? You could look at that as well. You know, enormously greater productive capacity with, a lo with, with lower on the food chain diet. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some issues that have come before. And people have re re reprised this research at various points over the past several decades, and the basic conclusions still hold. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the planet today gets about, uh, uh, solar energy falling on the planet today is about 17,000 times the demands of, of modern industrial society. So, you know, the, the potential and the capacity is there, and the question which a lot of people here at the Verge Conference have been looking at is how do we organize ourselves in a way that's effective and economical uh, and scalable to do that. Exactly. So what is the next big challenge that you're um, focusing on in your work? Well, let me answer that in, 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 in two ways. At, at a grand scale, the big challenge, I think, is very simple, and it's become increasingly clear to me over the years. What we are all up to here is, is reinventing the economy of an entire planet. This, so this planet... It's and, a clear task? ...and in one generation. So that's the background of the task. Within that, we're focused on a couple of things very specifically. Um, one is getting the prices right. Uh, mm -hmm. How do we remove the distorting influences of subsidies right. and, uh, and unpriced externalities which make it impossible for markets to operate effectively? Right. Uh, that's a big issue. That's not just ours as a, as a national logic project. That's a national mm -hmm. policy agenda that has to be met. Uh, the second, which we're working on uh, more directly, uh, as well as with a young startup company called Open Data Registry, is, is radical transparency in supply chain. Uh, again, it's the same agenda. It's people, you know, for people to make intelligent decisions, they have to have adequate information. Now, in the supply chain, how far back is the radical transparency that you seek? All Does the way it go back. all the way back to all the extraction? Way back. All the way back. Look, here's the deal. Um, everybody wants to know the provenance of everything. You know, mm -hmm. what was this made out of? Mm -hmm. What materials? Where? What labor practices? What shipping and so forth? Mm -hmm. You can't get that information now. It's hard to get. It's difficult technically, mm -hmm. uh, and it's difficult because of confidential business relationships and people's fear of sharing data. Mm -hmm. uh, Open Data Registry is building an information infrastructure to make it possible and safe to access and share that information. Um, the question that ODR is asking is what happens in the world when it is more valuable to share information than keep information secret? It's a very mm. powerful question. It's a very, and not a question people usually ask, right? No, because uh, in part because they were afraid to ask it, but more likely because they thought it was just an unrealistic question. Mm -hmm. uh, we now have the technology to make that possible, economical, and safe to do that. Uh, so with that, then when you go to the store as a consumer or when you do procurement as a business-to-business -business buyer and you want to make specifications mm -hmm. about the environmental health and safety characteristics of a product or a set of materials, mm -hmm. you'll be able to do that. Well, I'll, I will be very interested to see how that evolves, and I wish you the best of luck in that one. That's very, Thank very important. Thank you so much. Um, one final question for you, Gil. Uh, what advice do you have, what thoughts do you have for for other people who are doing sustainability-driven infrastructural change? Um, pay attention to what you really care about. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people in this work, and frankly a lot of people in business anywhere, um, get distracted uh, by the assumption or the myth that uh, it's only money, that it's all about, you know, it's only business, that the purpose of business is to maximize return to shareholders. Uh, we know both from, you know, each of our personal experience, but also from the research data, that the very best companies are driven by purpose, not by profit. Profit is the consequence, right. not the focus. If you, if, you, if you deliver something of great value and meaning to society that means something to your, to your employees as well as to your customers and do it well, the money follows. Uh, much more so than the companies who are focused simply on maximizing return. So I encourage uh, everybody I talk with, as well as, frankly, the, our clients in relation to their customers and their suppliers, to get right to the heart of what matters to you. Mm -hmm. And then, how do you bring that forth effectively uh, and profitably in the world? And I'm guessing that not only does um, profit follow from sustainability, but sustainable profit follows from uh, 
purpose-driven work. Well, there's no guarantee of sustainable profit. This still takes brilliant, com brilliant management and great engagement and terrific execution. Uh, but the possibility of that is far more likely. Right, yeah. because it stays on mission. Because it stays on mission and because there's some real human needs that need to be met. And the folks who can do that and do that well are going to succeed. Yes. Well, thank you so much for that advice. And My thank pleasure. you so much for talking with us thank today. Thank you.